Hey everyone, and welcome to this new, brand new series that I couldn't be more excited to uh, present to you guys. I'm joined today by Educated Collins, and Collins is a rank 400 and above player. That's right, you heard me correct, rank 400. Uh, Educated Collins, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, I'm Collins. I play Hearthstone. Wait, that's the wrong game. I play Marvel <laughs> Snap now. <laughs> but I, I, I play a lot of card games. I definitely have like a professional background in, in playing competitive card games and stuff like that and Marvel snap came out i wanted to join the beta but i didn't get access but global release came out and been having a lot of fun during that found out i was the highest rank in na uh after the event came out and i did the first like 300 and i was just like at the top so i was like oh that's pretty cool so kind of encouraged me to keep pushing so i ended up just pushing with the deck i had made uh made rank 400 made a video about it and that seems to have uh, open people's eyes to like my existence. So, yeah, hello, hello everybody. <laughs> Very nice to meet y'all. <laughs> yeah, and with that being said, we will be linking this exact video he's referring to and his YouTube channel and your Twitch in the description and in the comment section below, guys. Amazing content. Literally the highest ranked guy that I've, I've ever seen. Uh, it's amazing. And it, um, it's, it, it has to be said that like it's hard to get to that rank. And you've clearly kind of mastered certain elements of the game that I think were kind of in flux for many people. And during this series, we're going to be talking about many of those things. Today, we're going to focus on uh, you know general best practices with deck building and just general play. And then in future episodes, we're going to talk about your snapping and retreating uh, techniques because you mentioned a couple of those things in your video we're talking about you know analyzing the board state we're gonna be talking about trying to figure out what opponents are playing and how you can kind of counter that but with that being said let's get started with the topic for today because this is gonna be a multi-part series and this first episode is about your deck building and the concept you have around surprise cards which I found to be very fascinating so why don't you lead us through this deck and your concept around what a surprise card is and why they're so valuable okay so I, I do want to, do, throughout the series, want to talk about like a different deck like per video. This first video, uh, the one caveat I would say, I, we're not going to be using series four or five cards because I think most players, you know, they're not going to have access to that. And I want this video to be very um, uh, approachable for most people. I will say we are using Zabu in this first list. We will have some lists down the road that won't use Zabu, but... You know, it's it's there if you want it. Like if you're if you have the opportunity to use Zabu and you you're not and you wanna climb to infinite or above, like you're kinda trolling. So that's kind of the problem where there are some there are some requirements. You can go infinite without Zabu if you have pull threes. Um even pull twos, there's some players trying that, but it's definitely a lot easier to use the strong you know cards. Cards matter, right? You know, people like to say, Oh, you don't need any strong cards to win and that's a lie they're lying to you <laughs> you do need something something to work with so um we will be avoiding the series four or five cards but we will have um zabu in in the first couple of lists so this particular list i think is just a really really fun one and a really like um you know exciting list to play for uh players that have access to a lot of the pool three cards and in terms of surprise cards so if you want to climb, you have to think about the human element of the game and that the people you're fighting is also a human. And in order to, if you are dominating a game, what will people do, right? They'll leave, right? So that's the, like the issue. You have to find a way to circumvent that problem that people always leave if they think they're going to lose. So the best way I've, I've thought of, uh, I've come to the conclusion of is that you put a card in the, in your deck that people don't play around, that people don't expect. And that surprise factor lets them stay in the game because they think they have the advantage, but then you drop this card, usually turn five or six, and that will swing the game in your favor that they, they, the game ends and then they, you know, they didn't expect what you're going to do. So there's a couple clear examples. I would say like the obvious one that a lot of people use is Shang-Chi, right? And, and I would say, the more obvious a, uh, a card is, the less of a surprise it is. So uh, a card like Shang-Chi, they play it, turn six. If they're not expecting it, you blow up their card and then, like, whew, you know, you've won that location, you won that game, right? So that's that's the type of card. This is like the most basic, easy to understand example because pretty much everyone plays with Shang-Chi. Um, but there's so many other really good cards that fit that uh, archetype. The, the 
card I use in my particular deck is Scarlet Witch. That's a card that swaps locations. This card can really catch people off guard, like things like Bar with No Name. You think, oh, they're gonna they're gonna ignore that location. They're gonna uh, not play into it. No, I'm actually playing into Bar with No Name. Turn six, uh, and because I end with a Scarlet Witch and it turns that location into something Limbo, right? I can turn that uh, start playing on start ending a game turn five things like that you know arrow leader right i would say leader is in like a weird position because it is a it is it's, it's what i would call a surprise card but it became so popular that almost everyone is like thinking about it maybe a little less so this particular season but last season almost everyone was thinking about leader when it played it so you can you can turn traditionally surprise cards back into regular cards if it becomes so popular that everyone starts playing around it so that's kind of the the issue you can't just say oh this is always going to be a surprise once it becomes meta it stops being a surprise so you have to always be thinking about what's relevant what's not when you're when you're adding cards in your deck and how you're going to catch them off guard awesome and that's a, and like in this particular deck i'm going to assume that it's omega red that's your surprise card because i i look at the list and i've never seen anyone have a <laughs> ghost rider omega red combination so that's my assumption. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Uh, yeah, that would be that would be correct. I, I would say Omega Red is the flex spot, um, but in terms of like surprise factor, that is the pretty much card that pretty much no one's gonna play around. Where you can drop this uh, last turn, and if they're ignoring like your Dracula lane, you play the Omega Red, and you get this extra four power out of nowhere. You can really contest locations that uh, people aren't playing around. So yeah, but you can. If you like a different card or you want to swap it around, you can change it for something like Shang-Chi, Enchantress, uh, Magneto as well. Uh, Magneto would be another fantastic example of a surprise card, uh, especially in this meta, right? People play a lot of three and four, so you move them all to one location. Or Giganto if you just want as, as much power as possible, just 14 power for another Giganto target or a Jubilee target or or even a Ghost Rider target. So there's there's a couple options there, but for now we'll we'll try Omega Red, see how it feels, and if you know if things feel a little bit better, then we'll, we can change it up. That's awesome. Okay, so do you want to give us the general breakdown and uh, uh, kind of like piloting strategy behind right. this Dracula Zabu uh, Ghost Rider deck? Yeah. So this this deck is just abusing the fact that Dracula is broken. Honestly, right? This this card you can't counter it. Right, like just there's, there's no way to get rid of this this power. You can't Shang Chi, you can't Enchantress, you can't Rogue, can't do nothing against it. So you always, um, if played correctly, you always get this big uh, finish on on the turn. And because you can combo with uh, Zabu, since Zabu makes your cards cost two, uh, you can get a lot of power on the board. So this is like maybe the linchpin of the deck. But there's also some nice combos uh, built into the deck. You have the Sunspot Armor. Since you're running Infinite, right, you always have the Sunspot Armor. It's pretty much, uh, they're kind of married to each other where if you have Sunspot, like, and you can run Infinite, it makes a lot of sense. But the armor protects the Sunspot from Killmonger. The armor also protects your uh, big cars that you're going to be summoning, hopefully through Jubilee or Ghost Rider. So we do have some discard synergy. We have the Lady Sin. Either you're discarding the any of your six cost cards really and then you can drop down the ghost rider to bring it back uh the one like maybe weird synergy is the odin where it's like oh it's not that big of a power but this the card just has a lot of synergy with the deck where if you lady send the odin and then you ghost rider the uh the same location the ghost rider will summon the odin back but then the odin will proc the lady sin and then the odin will proc the ghost rider again so then you summon uh, you summon another card that you discard. Same thing with Jubilee, right? You Jubilee the Odin, the Odin will proc the Jubilee again, and then you summon another another location. And then also, if you just draw the Odin and the board is kind of empty, you can just play it into the Jubilee lane, or you can play it into the uh, the Ghost Rider lane, or or so, and get another proc there. So there's definitely some. Actually, actually, it'd be hard to get another proc on the Odin if, with the. Uh, ghost rider lane because you only have one discard but there are some locations that can discard so you know maybe that that's in there and then red skull is just like another high power card you pretty much don't want to play this card but uh sometimes you'll you'll have summoned the 
infinite already so you need something that you can pretty easily uh get rid of and uh, you'll draw the chavez on six so turn six if you have the red skull you can play the red skull i mean play the chavez and then the dracula will hit the red skull that's kind of the idea behind that that's perfect. Okay, so I think the uh, the next stage here is to take it into a game here, take it into a few games, and uh, right. we're going to be starting at about uh, rank 83 here, uh, so, you know, obviously we have a ways to climb, and I think for today what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to change it up throughout the series, but for today we're going to have a kind of a play style of where I'm going to do my turn, and then you're going to roast my turn if necessary, <laughs> so... Ah, and then, and then I'm this... sure you'll play perfectly. <laughs> I will surprise you, uh, but uh, in the future perhaps we'll, we'll have more of a discussion on a turn by turn basis because i think it's interesting to see kind of like in retrospect what could have been done better on any given turn because there's only six turns and each one of them can be incredibly important here so uh with that being said let's get started with the gameplay all right and we're in our first match here and naturally we have nothing so on this turn with your permission i'd like to end the turn <laughs> yeah that's a great play i like it thank you that's the best play i've made so far <laughs> that's quite good so we do have lady sif you're okay with uh discarding potentially odin here or do you want yeah. Zabu out on the board? Oh, yeah, Zabu. Is Zabu has to get played, right? And naturally, yeah, we can yeah, play yeah. Nonsot Citadel. So we're a little blessed. Now, my instinct here is to snap. Because yeah. we have Zabu I, I, on three Onslaught Citadel. We have Jubilee Dracula. This is this yeah. is blessed. I, I'm down. All I'm right. down. I, I have... I, I think this is so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, snap, snap if you have Zabu. It's kind of kind of obvious. Like, the the... The downside isn't really that bad. The downside is that you play a regular game with Zabu on your board. And then the upside is that they leave. So it's yeah. pretty it's pretty safe. Here we go. We're back in it. Once again, skipping turns. Apparently, Sunspot does not want to come into our hand. Neither does yeah, so I I wonder if you actually put Sunspot on your deck or you're kind of lying to me. So yeah, uh, You're the one that made the deck. <laughs> <laughs> Where's her sunspot? Oh, it's Black Widow. I like that variant, by the way. Let's pay some respect to that that uh, variant. Is that a nullified variant? It is. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and opens up a lot of, like, risk on, on our part, so... Yeah, and unfortunately, we didn't get Zabu. Onslaught Citadel yeah. sitting on the board. Everything feels yeah. awful here. It's armor into Death's Domain. He's Pretty playing my deck, unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, this is a Darkhawk situation here, unfortunately for us. Yeah, the locations are also really good for him, like Citadel in there. So the one, the one nice thing is he didn't play, um, he didn't play Zabu on three, so there we may have a be chance. a chance. Yeah. So we're gonna go for the uh, the pull here with the the Jubilee. This is my best bet. What do you think of this yeah. play? Yeah, the one the one problem is that um, they can pretty much always win Citadel if they play Dark Hawk. So. You're not really contesting that location. Oh, but that's okay. Well, that's that's mind. pretty blessed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. Yeah, but we don't have Lady Sin, so. Yeah, uh, without Sif, it's hard to like. We can't play Ghost Rider right now. What we can do though is we can kind of scare the crap out a little bit with this Dracula play. Like Dracula will always kind of sit into his, uh, sit in his mind, be like that can hit anything, right? Well, and um. That that's true. That's true. Alternatively, I, I we could Red Skull onto the left side, but no, no. I I think we do play Ghost Rider though. Uh, that's that's the one caveat that you say we don't play Ghost. I think we do play the Ghost Rider because because you're probably going to um. You, you're probably going to play the six cost card next turn, so it's just three power, right? It only costs one, so you know it it's still it's still worth it in that in that consideration you also don't want the dracula to pull the ghost rider so I, even if even if you can't get the value from it you still play the card so he's on uh, the board so i would i would play dracula and ghost rider to this location i'd probably put um i i would probably only put dracula right and then i'd put the other two left so dracula right the other two left no 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 the other two the full left like, oh, I guess you can't play Sunspot left. I can't play. Oh, you, can, oh you can't play him left. Oh, oh I right at time. It's oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right. I didn't see the Hellfire. That's a that's a good point. Collapse Mine's good for you. Yeah, because... actually cause... ended up playing okay because of this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're like, play left. I'm like, I, don't, I can't play left. Okay, so Dracula's right. on board. We have a lot of heavy hitters here, which is nice, actually. Um, What do we he do He actually here? may have helped you out. Yeah. <laughs> what a weird game this has been. 
Yeah, you can go. Um, I lean towards go, Chavez left. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you. I think you'd go Chavez right. Actually, go Chavez, Chavez right. right. Okay. Are you yeah, are you kind of playing the mind game that he thinks he's gonna have to put more power on the uh, left side? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna try to win left and right, right? And you 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 already win middle, so you just have to win the right lane, which is the hardest one to commit. So you can you can probably snap as well, actually here. So I, I would say don't normally don't snap right because he's gonna leave right. But I, I you know I I would I would test the waters of the dark hawk player see if he respects the game at all. So he does he does, does he respect, respect the, the game? game. <laughs> yeah yeah like so so. The, there's always like I'm always testing players because usually people get into my bracket uh, of of MMR and then if it's like a new face and I know they're they're a human, I, I I need to test them and see how good they are you know so I I you know I, I do little things like I'll snap where I'm not supposed to see how they react and, and things like that and then then I get a I get a feel of like how good they are how how much I can abuse them I definitely have some players where I can just like snap turn one they always leave and I'm just like laughing because it's like well, okay because 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 they they know like they know like oh he's he's good enough to understand like oh he's snapping here it means something sometimes it does right so like I'm not, it's not always a, a faint but you can get to that point like but but you do have to be like at a high where you're fighting the same people i yeah. think at 84 you're probably not in that yeah i'm not there yeah 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 but i would say normally like you don't like that's why we don't snap turn six right if you think you're gonna win which i did think we were gonna win but um the problem yeah. is that you know i i wanted to see if he would give us the extra cubes or not. okay so we have sunspot armor and zabu here on the start of this next game and uh, this feels pretty blessed we also have the lady sif which is going to come out whatever we draw next is probably going to be a big card this feels like a turn one snap to me, but like you tell me if I'm wild and if I do that. So traditionally, I would say C two locations before you snap. But here, your hand is pretty nutty, so I'd say you could probably snap to turn one. And uh, I lean towards playing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's <laughs> correct. You guys can't stay in the game. No, 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 leaving is correct. I agree with them. Like, what? Is, what it's right. <laughs> So this is kind of the issue of like being decent. It's hard to get cues off of people, especially like as they're trying to climb. Like, I would put, so my play here was I would play armor on the left side because we don't have Shang-Chi anyways. And anything that we play that bumps up into a Shang-Chi range does not benefit us. Absolutely. All right. Yes. Look at this. You're not totally disappointed with me yet. So the things are off to a good start. <laughs> I think this is oh, not the ice man. Not the yeah. Dracula. It's always the freaking ice man. Hate ice man. Didn't ice yeah. man bar sinister though, which could have been a clutch play, but he would have given that location, but it would have completely ruined my life. Yeah. Ice man's so annoying. I do agree. With oh my you ice man. Know, Scorpion. Okay, he's, he's that this guy's guy toxic. Guy. Yes. This guy is absolutely toxic. Uh, I'm leaning towards uh, the nice thing about hellfire club is, uh, we can play Jubilee here. She is a straight up zero. But I, your opinion, he has two low cost units here. Jubilee's going to get a plus five. We kind of want to just zoo this location a bit. And it's very likely it pulls something with some strength here. Uh, but actually, not really. We're kind of, we have all our big cards in our hand. So we have the Chavez hit potentially. We have the Red Skull hit potentially. No, Red Skull's in our hand. Jubilee here feels risky, no? Yeah, I, I would put Jubilee right. So no, yeah, Jubilee is a great target in that location, but Jubilee in this particular deck wants to be played alone because yeah, you know you can because you can hit the Odin right. You you get the access of playing Odin in there uh, at some point. So yeah, we do hit the the red here. Hmm. Now considering that he just moon girled, we know he has a couple things. I would consider we don't have a discarded card yet. He snaps on us here. Yeah, this is a this is a risky game, right? To stay in for sure. Right. And and there there's no need to to have ego here. I would say we can probably leave. So you, you suggest leaving here, they have a bit of an advantage. The Moon Girl, um, the full hand, I'm not even sure what they'd be playing here. if they taskmaster, it's probably a devil dinosaur deck. Because they could probably taskmaster the devil dinosaur. Yeah, that's possible. But basically, we're not in a great position. The Iceman is actually pretty good hitting the Dracula, so we can play it. And uh, 
Uh, so you're saying conserve we, the Cuban walk? Yeah, conserve the Cuban walk. Yeah, no, no need to have ego. There's, there's no, there's no, there's no fight about this. Sometimes they have a good hit. It, maybe if our Jubilee was a little bit better, like hit the Chavez or something. But even then, like it, it maybe have to hit Zabu actually. Maybe actually be better than that. So. Okay. Our next game here, starting off with armor Jubilee Dracula, super flow in our hand, so armor armor is going to be able to come out nice and early. Sunspot as well. So uh, you know, how would you approach this? For me, I would consider using the the uh, the mana efficiently and playing the armor, and I would probably just go right and just. Well, the mana efficiently is sunspot, no, because <laughs> you get the extra one mana, uh, the one power, and then you know, anytime you're saving the power, you get the extra mana. So like, I would say sunspot's more efficient because you'll end up with one extra power overall. Okay. Uh, in, in essence, because I mean, even if you waste, um, if you use things optimally, then I mean, you're always always playing sunspot, and then at some point, like you'll drop the armor, or if things happen, you might never play armor at all. So mm -hmm. it just just feels like it, it'll work. Yeah. So in this case here, because this can't be played after turn four, we have jubilee. I'm willing to play armor to the right. Now he snapped on us, but I don't think this is a. We don't need to leave. Nah, yeah, I think it's fine unless he, uh, I guess he plays Zabu, right? That's pretty much always what they do, but... He snapped on turn three because Zabu, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it means. Okay. So he's going to be able to, like, Zuo pretty aggressively? Uh-huh. Um, my play here would be Jubilee mid. Um... It could be Jubilee or Dracula, right? Like, because Dracula, you know, it's you know very likely to be at least 15 power or, or so. So okay, Jubilee so we... could be 10. Yeah, because Jubilee has a chance to hit Odin, Chavez. I mean, it has a still you chance know, to hit Zabu, Sif. Right, yeah. Um, I guess, I guess Jubilee is fine here, right? Because you could do it next turn. Yeah, right? it's still turn You're three. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting. That's true. Okay, a little blessed there. No, so Dark plays... Hawk player. It's good to play the Jubilee before. Oh, no, he's playing. Well, it, it, I guess it's Dark Hawk Dracula. I guess he's playing both of them together. Does uh, he play dry? Does he give mid? Or does he play probably mid? Probably, right. So I, I think you could probably get away with Omega Red, yeah. And yeah. you have to play that. You have to play a rock. You have to play a rock because your Dracula is going to... Yeah. You put it mid, right? Yeah, yeah of course. Sorry, I know what I was thinking there. Sorry. Good call. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's also Grand Central, right? You don't want the rock to go into Grand Central. Either. No. I mean, theoretically, he could maybe contest mid as well, right? If he, if he, he does. really wants to. Okay. It'd have to be Darkhawk mid. Yeah, it'd have to be Darkhawk. You still win it. Yeah, we don't get the Omega Red proc. Yeah, you don't but... get the proc, though, yeah. Now the question becomes, does he does he Mystique now? And where does he Mystique? It's only 11, actually. It's not as big as I've often seen. Mm -hmm. I feel like Red Skull would be a great candidate left, so perhaps... We don't want Lady Sif to get pulled into Grand Central here and then right. discard. Yeah, the... so so that's kind of the predicament we're in right now. Because we guarantee draw Chavez next turn, but just just uh -huh. to discard Chavez feels awful. The Grand Central is really messing us up here, isn't it? It is a little bit, yeah. Conversely, uh, um... we can skip the turn, run the Sunspot, and let Grand Central perhaps pull the Red Skull and conserve. Oh. Hmm. That's that's not that bad of a play. Okay, you know what? You sold me. Yeah. Okay. Skip. Okay. We're kind of playing. We're rolling the dice here a little bit. He plays Lady Sif himself. Hits a Giganto. This is going to be Ghost Rider. Yeah. So we need to win the left lane, basically. Okay. Drag, drag. Uh, oh my God. Ah. Uh. So if we go Lady Sin, we always mill. We always well, it'd have to be right. 
Right? Yeah, it has to be right. It guarantee he hits Chavez. We get 15 on Dracula. So it's a 19 power play. We go to 31. But what's how many cards he has in his hand? He's got one. one. Okay, so it's probably Chavez, right, in his hand, maybe. So if well, we Sunspot get Sunspot gets we, four as well. Yeah, so I think we are. I think we're fine. We haven't snapped, have we? But no. let's not. Let's not. Let's not. You no. don't want to go eight? Well, he might leave, right? That's that's why you don't do it. Um, if he's not sure, uh, he'll. So I think you just go. For just the go, floor. okay, for the cubes. Yeah. You called it. Yeah. It was Chavez. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then this you is get a the very clean team. dub. Yeah. Oh, so look! Nice. It's just oh, it's a thing of beauty to see a good plan to come together, eh? Yeah, I, I think if you snap, he leaves. You don't. Get, you only get. That's the problem with snapping. So you either have to snap earlier. But the thing is, after he plays the Zabu mid, it becomes iffy, right? Like, you, you, we, we don't know exactly if we win. We did. I love the wait turn, the wait on five. I think that was really smart. Like, I, I, I wasn't thinking about that, you know? So you actually, that play was better than mine. Play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, small victory for Alex. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it gave us the... the it lessened the risk of of the pool essentially, and then we also got we got like Dracula as a hit, which is amazing. So definitely a really really smart play from you there. So awesome. I, I like I like the I like it I like it a lot. Yeah. That's good. Well, guys, good news. We're gonna have another episode on this side. Sorry, up in the uh, screen there. So check it out. Episode number two. We're gonna be focusing a lot on the uh, the snapping and retreating mechanic of the game. We're gonna be discussing a lot of those, and we're also gonna be doing a brand new deck list as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. As I said prior, educated calls, um, YouTube, Twitch, and everything is gonna be down below. Twitter as well. So be sure to check them out. Got to your player, and we'll see you in the next episode.